in the lush green countryside of Guatemala, with majestic mountains rising up on either side and flocks of bright birds soaring overhead, a car zips along a small ribbon of road. Ah, helic, beautiful, murmurs the woman inside the car. Her eyes sparkle with wonder as she gazes at the beauty of this incredible landscape. This was her home for so long. She grew up here. She farmed here. She learned to speak out and fight for the rights of indigenous people here. And now, after many years away, she is back to celebrate all that Guatemala has become. And Guatemala is thrilled to celebrate her, their national hero. Because this woman is Rigoberta Menchutum, one of the greatest rebels of all time. I'm Jane Santos, and this is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, a fairy tale podcast about the rebel women who inspire us. On this episode, Rigoberta Menchutum, Mayan activist, outspoken storyteller, brave community organizer, and the first indigenous person to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Rigoberta grew up in a paradise deep in the mountains of Guatemala. The village where she lived was called Chimel, and it was just a handful of small houses surrounded by dense rainforests and wide fields. It was Rigoberta's family that taught her to be so bold and to care so much. Her father, Vicente, was a community activist and leader in their village of Chimel. Her mother, Juana, was a healer who walked miles across the countryside to serve those in need. They spoke Quiche and lived by the Mayan culture, which believes in the beauty and sanctity of all living beings. Rigoberta learned early on to appreciate the land and every creature on it. She loved all the colorful birds whooping overhead, the raging rivers cutting through canyons, the spider monkeys swinging from tree to tree. But she also saw how poor her village was and heard that the Guatemalan government was trying to take away what little they had. As Rigoberta and her little brother knelt in the field, harvesting coffee beans, she dreamed of different ways to take a stand. We are always working in the fields, she sighed. But I want to do something more. Her brother popped out beans into their basket. Something more? Like chasing spider monkeys? Oh no, Patrocinio. I mean something important. You know how our father is always traveling and helping other peasants? Her brother nodded. I want to be like him. I want to help people get out of poverty and have better jobs. How are you going to do that? Her brother asked. Farming is hard work, but at least it feeds our family. Rigoberta thought about it for a moment. You're right, she said. But I have a feeling that if I do it right, my work could feed the whole country of Guatemala. It was a long and painful journey from farm girl to freedom fighter. You see, rebels, in the 1950s, a terrible dictator and his military regime took power in Guatemala. People who opposed the government were often harassed or even killed. By the 1970s, the violence had spread to the rural regions of Guatemala, including Chimel. It was a scary and dangerous time. Rigoberta was still very young, but she cared deeply about her village and about justice. She and her family were very brave, striking and protesting against the unfair government. Still, 
Resistance was dangerous work. By the time Rigoberta was 21, she had lost her mother, father, and brother to the brutal violence of the Guatemalan military. She felt broken without her family, but she refused to give up fighting for her people. So, Rigoberta turned her grief into action. She held protests and strikes. She organized workers to rise up with her. Soon, she was known as a powerful leader of indigenous people. Only the government's threats against her got worse and worse. So when she was 22, she made a very difficult decision. She had to leave. As she fled on a plane to Mexico, tears fell from Rigoberta's wide eyes. She was leaving her home, the land she loved so. But I will come back, she promised herself. One day soon, I pray. Once she was safe in Mexico, Rigoberta slowly regained her strength. And even though it was hard, she shared her story with the priests and nuns who had helped her escape. One of them invited Rigoberta to speak at a conference of Catholic bishops from Central and South America. Rigoberta didn't think she spoke Spanish very well, but she shared her story slowly and carefully. My name is Rigoberta Menchu. My story is the story of all poor Guatemalans. My personal experience is the reality of a whole people. The audience of religious leaders was so moved by her story. They wanted Rigoberta to travel the globe and make sure everyone heard it. The following year, Rigoberta stood up in front of all kinds of audiences, describing what happened to her, her family, and her people. Her voice grew stronger and steadier as she met with different activists and learned about similar struggles of so many people. In 1982, Rigoberta was encouraged to put her story down in print. So, with the help of an anthropologist, she turned some of her interviews into a book called I, Rigoberta Menchu. When Rigoberta's book came out, it opened many people's eyes to the suffering of the Mayan people. Millions of people read it, and soon, Rigoberta's name became known throughout the world. She used the momentum and excitement about her book to fuel her as she kept advocating for human rights and for the safety of indigenous people. Then, in 1992, Rigoberta was called back to Guatemala. This is where we find her, zipping along a winding road through the mountains. Ah, Elik. Beautiful, she murmurs, as the trees seem to lift their branches in greeting. She has longed to be here for many years. It's so familiar and yet so different now. People line up to watch Rigoberta's car pass. They cheer for her and hold signs that say things like, We love you, Mayan daughter. Churches ring their bells and fireworks sprinkle across the sky. It's impossible not to feel their pride and their joy. You see, Rigoberta has just been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, which is one of the highest honors in the world. It's given to someone who has dedicated their life to creating peace and justice for all. Rigoberta is the first indigenous person, and only the ninth woman, to be nominated for this great award. Her heart is filled with so many emotions, happiness, and hope, and of course the wish that her family could share this awesome moment with her. In her hand, she holds a copy of her book. Its cover, a bright red with green and gold stripes, and a drawing of her face in the middle, full and resolute. 
She feels the strength of the millions of indigenous people she has fought for so long welling up inside her. She has come home. Let there be freedom for the Indians, wherever they may be. Rigoberta says, as she accepts her Nobel Peace Prize. Because while they are alive, a glow of hope will be alive. To this day, Rigoberta continues to nurture that glow of hope into a wild flame of truth and equality. The Guatemalan government signed a peace treaty, and her homeland has been rebuilding itself as a country that respects all people. There is still a lot of work to do, of course, but Rigoberta is here for it all. She will never stop honoring the glorious land where she was born and never stop believing in humanity. Her commitment to justice continues to inspire people all over the world. Her rebel spirit leading us forward. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This episode was narrated by me, Jane Santos. It was produced and directed by Joy Smith with sound design and mixing by Real Audiobooks. It was written by Elena Fobili and edited by Abby Scher. Fact checking by Joe Radigan. Our executive producers are Elena Fobili and Joy Smith. Original theme music was composed and performed by Electra Bar Jockey. A special thanks to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Until next time, stay Rebel.